Today I've got an exciting and a very unique home theater tour from one of my longtime patrons. Don is an incredible gentleman in his early 70s with a huge passion for music and movies. His 7.1.6 Dolby Atmos living room home theater features an 85 inch TV, Anthem Avium 70 processor, several amplifiers from Outlaw Audio and PS Audio, massive Tecton Polycell 15 speakers, vintage Infinity Center channel and surrounds, dual SVS subwoofers, two turntables, and a music collection of 35,000 CDs, 5,000 records, and 8,500 of his CDs are ripped to his music server. Now, all of his music can be distributed throughout every room of his house using Rune. Now, I wanna give a huge thank you to all of my patrons like Don, who continue to support the work that I do here on YouTube and allow me to share incredible home theater tours like this one with you. Consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash youth man. Well, Don, thanks so much for inviting me into your incredible home, dude. This is gonna be truly unique for you guys. Um, I've never seen quite a living room like this, but we're gonna look at all of your components. We're gonna talk about the specs, why you chose the speakers that you did, um, and your love and passion for both music and movies and how you've implemented that into your living room setup. And so most people don't have a dedicated room like I do. They don't have the luxury uh, to be able to enclose a, a, a section of their room or their home and have a dedicated space, but you've turned this into an incredible movie experience. So first of all, let's just talk about like the size of your room so that you guys can kind of get a feel for what space we're working with. And first, thank you very much for coming to my home. I'm I glad really to be here, this. It's my pleasure. Uh, the space is uh, about uh, 16 by 15 in size, mm -hmm. but the problem is it has an angled ceiling on the top. Correct. Yeah. Which goes from eight feet up to about 12. Yeah. So you don't have a flat ceiling to work with. And we're going to talk about some of the challenges that you mm -hmm. face with trying to do a dedicated space or a home theater in a, a living room setup. And you've done some really creative things. And so I'm excited to go through all of this. Um, so let's talk about the, the layout. What's the configuration as far as how many speakers you've got running? Okay, this is, uh, it's got a total of, it's a 9.2.6. So okay. there's nine bed layer speakers, there's two subwoofers, and there's six Atmos speakers. Yeah. And so that's a lot of speakers for uh, a small space, but I love the immersiveness that we got when we were going through the demos. We probably spent two or three hours just demoing different content and just having fun in here. But I even love the fact that you've got all your bed layer speakers really low, almost at ear level. And that's something that Atmos recommends. I just don't have that luxury, even in a dedicated room, just because of con some constraints that I have of the entryway when people walk in. I don't want them smacking into the speakers, but I love the immersiveness that we have here. So you had mentioned um, that you, you know, the angled ceiling, that was difficult. And so when you're thinking about adding Atmos, what were your thoughts in this space here? Well, I, when I first started out, I bolted the speakers like right up at the, uh, okay. uh, you know, on, on the sides. Yeah. And it just didn't really have the impact. Yeah. So, um, being the engineer, I said, "Okay, how do you put how do you put an Atmos speaker on an angle ceiling?" Yeah. And I found a company in Texas called HTD that okay. makes a it's a medium quality uh, speaker. Yeah. But what they had is they uh, they have steerable tweeters. Okay. And so the speakers on this side uh, there's a nine degree angle. Okay. So when you put the speaker in, it's coming down nine degrees, and you right. can steer it closer. What do you do on that side? Well, they just happened to make a speaker that has an 18 degree angle. Nice. So by turning it and flipping it around, it makes it nine degrees pointing this way. Right. So I was able to actually, with the angle ceiling, get the angles proper for the uh, sound. Right. And then the, of course, the uh, ARC, that takes out all the distance problems. And so sure. you hear everything the same. Yeah. But absolutely. that solved a major problem. Right. And that could do flush seat. I can do flush mount then. Sure. And that's really cool. And we're going to talk about some other challenges that Don faced in this room, but we all have challenges. Whether you've got a dedicated space or you have a living room set up, a bedroom set up, you're going to run into some issues and you may not be able to put your speakers exactly where you need to, but we've got to make the best with what we have. And that's what I love sharing about 
uh, home theaters here on the channel. So let's go ahead and talk about your speakers. Since we're talking about those, you've got some pretty unique speakers. I've only seen a, a couple of these out in the wild, and this is the first <laughs> time I've ever heard this series. Um, so tell us a little bit about those speakers and uh, why you chose them. Well, I was originally <clears throat> very heavy into music, and uh, uh, I ran across a company called Tecton. Yeah. They're out of uh, Utah. Okay. And uh, uh, Ale er uh, Eric Alexander, mm -hmm. kind of a, I don't want to say a one-man show, but yeah. he's, he's the driving force of the company. Sure. And they, they build, they ship direct to consumer. Yeah. So I kept hearing people talk about this unique design they have with this uh, tweeter array. Mm-hmm. And I went into their uh, website, and I fell in love with these speakers I saw that had these beautiful horns on them. Yeah. And uh, uh, these are called Polycell 15s. Mm -hmm. And basically, what the speaker is, it has seven uh, flare horns, mm -hmm. which happen to be JBL. Right. And then it's got two 15-inch woofers, which are Eminence Pro woofers. Mm -hmm. These speakers are capable of 1,500 watts yeah. and uh, 103 dB of uh, sensitivity. So you yeah. can really drive them with 5 watts if you sure. wanted to. Um, and when I first saw them, the uh, the woofers were top and bottom, mm -hmm. and the tweeter array was in the center because it was designed for a stage. Right, gotcha. So Eric called me and says, are you going to be using this on a stage? I says, no, I'm at home theater. He says, I'm going to change the design for you. Mm, that's cool. So he moved the uh, tweeter array to the top. Gotcha. And these are actually serial numbers three and four. Gotcha. That, uh, other than the those models are built. And they're the ones that's featured on his website. Nice. And uh, what's unique about them is you get into everybody. So well, how do you do with comb filtering? All that mm -hmm. stuff. Well, only the center tweeter, center one of the seven is the tweeter. Yeah. The other six are rolled off it to make the mid-range. Gotcha, right. And uh, so it has a very unique sound. The whole theory is they don't have to work as hard so that they, mm. you get the best sound quality. Makes sense. Very cool. So, uh, the, uh, you know, I ordered these sight on, I mean, Faith. I ordered you never, Faith. You never heard them. I've never heard, I've never heard awesome. of Tecton before. Yeah. And uh, I got them in and uh, my neighbor who's an audiophile, we hooked them up and I go, wow. Yeah. That was just wow. Yeah. They're super cool speakers, and they have some of the similar characteristics that, that I love in horn speakers. You know, that dynamics, the clarity, the detail. Um, they're probably on the um, brighter side of neutral. I don't think they're harsh, but they're they're definitely not like a, a laid-back kind of speaker, man. These are ones that, that you just kind of want to crank them up and just enjoy them. And we did quite a bit yeah. of that. So it's interesting, though, that, all right, so you have a, a TV setup. We'll talk about that in a second. But tell us about your choice of um, your center channel and your surrounds, because that's, it seems like, okay, that's quite a drastic difference, but we'll talk about that. So tell us what, you, what you've got going on with the rest of the speakers. Okay, well, the, uh, you know, I bought, the, of course, the Tecton's new, mm -hmm. but... Uh, I had a budget, and I'm watching what everybody's spending on their surround speakers. And, yeah. and from the early days, my early days, I had originally bought from Circuit City, where yeah. you used to work. Yeah, man, represent. And I had bought uh, Infinity RS Series speakers, yeah. of which two of them in the theater I still have from 30 years ago. Wow, that's amazing. And they have a very good sound. They were uh, uh, 89 dB mm -hmm. efficient. They can handle 130, 140 watts. Sure. They're back-ported. And uh, so uh, I said, I think I'll use those for my surrounds and doing a little uh, youth man shopping. Yes. Okay. I love I've, it. I found uh, more of them. I probably, yeah. I've, so I've got six here now. Right. More in the other rooms and I've got a whole closet full of backups. Don's got an incredible collection. There's speakers everywhere in his house. We'll look <laughs> at that in a little bit. But uh, so then I, but then I, the center channel was a problem, and mm -hmm. I didn't realize when I first started that how important the center channel was. Yeah, correct. So I had the little CC one, and it didn't, it didn't sound good. Yeah. So I moved up to a um, an, another uh, Serwin Vega. Mm -hmm. It was better, but not as good. Yeah. Then I ran into this center channel called a uh, Infinity Beta 360 with ceramic metal. Yeah. Uh, it's a three-way with. Uh, uh, ceramic metal uh, woofers mm -hmm. and uh, mid-range and tweeter. Yeah. 
and it can handle 200 watts and it's 91 dB efficient. Right. But it turns out that it timber matched the tectons. Right. You, yeah. It just, it was unusual. So what this allowed me to do by using these old antique vintage speakers, yeah. I could have a good sound in my theater without spending a huge fortune. Yeah. So I'm going to be full transparent with okay. you, and I didn't even share this with you. When you first sent me your, your photos of your room, I went, okay, that's really different. Like, how is that going to sound good with an Infinity Center channel? Totally different drivers, different materials. These are horn loaded. I'm like, okay, Don, I'm, I'm serious, and, and I, I'm no joke. I'm really, really surprised and impressed at how well that blended. It's weird. Now, I don't know if it's because of it just, they just happen to have some kind of similar sound characteristics, or if it's the anthem and the ARC that's. Or it could be the amplifiers, who that, knows? That's helping to yeah. EQ that. I don't know what it is, or maybe it's just a combination of it all, but I was super impressed with that. We watched uh, Ready Player One. I'm going, man, dialogue's phenomenal. Very, very clear, easy to understand. Um, and when things panned, it was, I'm like, just way, way, way surprised at how well that works together. So that's really cool, the fact that you didn't have to spend a fortune. You found some speakers that you really like, you like their sound, and you found a way to implement that in your room, and you got some really crazy youth man deals on it, which I'm always a fan anytime we can save money in this hobby because it does get expensive, especially when you're wanting to do six you know, surround speakers, six overhead speakers, um, and then we've got two subwoofers as well. So tell us about your subwoofers. Well, I started off with um, with the one I bought from Circuit City, yeah. which was a Sony. It was a, a 240, 250 watt, had two 10-inch drivers mm -hmm. that were opposing. And uh, I got a second one. Then I put some JBL speakers on top of them. I always liked the JBL sound. Yeah. And just like the uh, the horns, you know, with the clips and, mm -hmm. and, and like your JTRs. Yeah. And then... Uh, then I moved up and I got some uh, SB12 NSDs from mm -hmm. SVS. They were the uh, totally enclosed, not right. ported. Sure. They were okay, but they weren't yeah. powerful. Yeah. And then I got uh, you know that Black Friday deal where they they gave me or no the deal was I take it back so it's black. If you within one year okay right want to the upgrade, upgrade they yeah. gave me full value for my originals, and I got these SB. Uh, 2000 pros yeah i mean i'm sorry pb 2000 pros right and what a difference i mean they uh yeah. they're they're just they're just phenomenal i think they're 550 watts each mm -hmm. peak to 1500 yeah and as you saw they will they you feel them yeah we've got great tactile base they're not massive speakers so that's good especially for a living room setup most of you guys probably don't have the ability to put massive subwoofers you know big 15s or 18 inch subwoofers in your setup um but Don was able to incorporate dual subs, which I always recommend if you can go dual subs. And we got quite a bit of tactile base. I mean, we felt it in our chest, felt it in our legs. And there was a couple of scenes we actually felt the wind from yes. it. So that was pretty funny. So that was pretty cool. So we've got, um, and then you mentioned your the brand that, yeah, that's right. You did mention the brand that you've got for your Atmos speakers. So we've got nine bed layer speakers down here. We've got six Atmos and then we've got dual subwoofers. And honestly, like I said, you've got it dialed in really, really nice. I love the separation that we've got from Atmos to your bed layer. This blended really nice. Uh, we could hear your surrounds. Um, like I said, I wish I had my surrounds a lot lower in my setup. Well, there then, was another advantage of putting them at this level too. These cabinets allowed me to have some diffusion. Yeah, true. Which uh, helped in the uh, acoustics in the room. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about your acoustics because you've done some creative things there as well um, to try to tame that echo. I mean, without doing some of those things, it, it wouldn't sound near as good as what it does now. So let's talk about your equipment. What do you got going on up in your cabinet? Well, my my baby is the uh, oh, AVM70. Yeah. That thing looks gorgeous. And I was an early adopter. I, I got it from uh, uh, Maximum AV over in Tampa, the dealer. Yeah. It was one of the first. I mean, I knew it was going to have... Firmware quirks, issues and, yeah, yeah. and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But uh, so I moved from an SR7012 Marantz mm -hmm. to the receiver of the Anthem, which is a 15 channel plus two sub receiver, and then went to all external amplification. Yeah. 
And um, I had never, all my experience was either with Odyssey, with um, Marantz, right. or with the the system in the Onkyo, which right. I had before sure. that. Yeah. And uh, this ARC is just phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, how it blends everything together. Yeah. But this receiver, uh, what it allowed me to do was, because I love two-channel mm -hmm. and I love um, the, uh, the uh, AVR stuff, there wasn't enough inputs mm -hmm. in the Marantz or the Onkyo to handle all my turntables right. and everything. So I had to have manual switches and I'm yeah. doing all this stuff. This Anthem handles everything I have. It has nice. enough inputs for everything. Simplified your process. It simplified my process, yes. So that's, that's, the, that's, the, uh, that's the heartbeat of the system right, right there. Nice. What else you got going on in there? And then uh, I have a, um, uh, the, you know, the UB800 mm -hmm. uh, 4K player. Underneath that I have a, uh, a uh, CXC uh, disc uh, only. You know, mm -hmm. it's not it's not a player, but it's just the disc. It's just the the CD itself. CD transport. And CD okay. transport. And then I also have uh, because of my love for two channel, I've got a device called a micro rendu. Okay. Because I I use Rune as my correct. As you saw, I have a Rune server. Yeah. And that's feeding all the systems in the house by Ethernet. Yeah. And uh, so I have a micro rendu with a a DAC. It's called a tone DAC. Okay. And that and that tone DAC then goes into the analog inputs of the uh, of the Anthem. Anthem will in the future, this will be rune ready okay. some point, then I can actually go directly Ethernet right nice. into there and eliminate that device altogether. Cool. Yeah. But also, uh, I have turntables. I have a uh, U-turn and a music hall. Yeah. And why two turntables? Well, one turntable is hooked up to the uh, phono input, just a standard phono input of the Anthem. Okay. But uh, my neighborhood, my neighbor who's an audiophile in the tubes and stuff, he says, you've got you to do tubes. Right. So the music hall goes into a little, it's called Fosse. It's a little tube buffer, mm -hmm. and uh, you can change the, the vacuum tubes in it. Yeah, to give and it maybe different signature different, sounds. Different, yeah. softer sound. Cool. And so he brought over his collection of about 30 sets of vacuum tubes. Right. We roll tubes, and we said, oh, wow, that, that one sounds the best. He gave me a pair nice. to put in. And so I can play their music from that. Yeah. And uh, there is a difference between sure. it's, it's certain old recordings. You what, get, what do you prefer? Uh, actually, I think I prefer the tube sound yeah. for some of the old recordings. I, I've got the new Abbey Road yeah. uh, three, three set, and it sounds really good on the tubes. Yeah. And then uh, I also have a, uh, there's a 4K Fire Stick. Mm -hmm. uh, not Fire Stick, 4K Cube. Yeah. Fire and uh, or that's like that. what provides most of the uh, the audio experience outside the home theater. Mm -hmm. Then there's just some legacy stuff at the bottom. There's an old uh, VHS tape yeah. player and there's an old uh, cassette player. Yeah. But yet this um, Anthem handles them all. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's great when you find an, an AVR that can be a hub or a processor that can be the hub of everything. And so everything goes into that. All your video switching, all your processing goes, uh, you know, is handled by that. And then you've got the internal room correction, which is nice. And one thing that you shared with me that I really like with the Anthem is you have four presets, I believe. Yes, capability. I, I have two of them right now. One yeah. is home theater. Right. So where you and I are setting, yeah, it's programmed for that location. Right. And uh, but when I listen to two channel, I just it automatically. You know, I'm using the uh, Harmony Elite. Okay. And in the program, when it switches over to like listen to two channel, yeah. the Harmony automatically selects selects that profile. second profile, yeah. which is only the two Tekton speakers and the two subwoofers. Yeah, perfect. And that's you know because that's what you would prefer to listen to and, when you're watching or listening to music. And back on the subs for a minute, you know these these there's that's 15 inch woofers in the mm -hmm. Tektons, mm -hmm. and so uh, they go down to 30 hertz. Right. So that's probably helps why I don't need a lot more bass in the room. I have it with that, and I was able to blend those together pretty well. Yeah, yeah, I think you did a great job, and I love the sound here. So you've got really nice equipment. You've got some older speakers, save some money there. We've got beautiful towers, man. These things are massive, very unique and stylish in their own uh, right. And then one thing I really, really love is from the time I walked in, I just sense this this passion for music, and so talk to us about your passion for that, your collection. You got like 
records and you've got uh, CDs literally all over your house. So talk us through that. Well, you know, um, I when I got back into um, music and everything again, really digging into it, yeah. I started uh, collecting uh, CDs. Even though I can stream music, there's nothing better. Now, when I stream music with Rune, mm -hmm. I have Cobas, which is high resolution, sure. so I can right. listen to it. But I still like high resolution music. Yeah. So I started buying CDs. Yeah. And the time I started buying CDs, and my neighbor says, you've got to get into vinyl records. Right. At that time, everybody was dumping their CD collections and their mm -hmm. vinyl record collections. So I, I got youth man deals on steroids. Yeah, okay? that's awesome. I mean, I would go, I bought DJ's collections. I bought, nice. uh, you know, I'd buy 600 brand new CDs for $60. Yeah. I bought 50 to 100 vinyl records for 60 bucks wow so um so i have 8500 cds <laughs> that are actually ripped wow. on my music server okay and they're in either bookcases yeah. or they're cataloged yeah my total collection is about 35,000 cds oh my goodness that's insane and then on albums um i have in here probably about 2000 and i have uh with my stuff in st with storage probably another Two to three thousand, probably a thousand classical. Right. Um, I even have a collection which I didn't show you. I actually have a collection. I bought somebody's uh, DJ collection. Okay. There are thirty threes that have uh, just what they would play in a nightclub. Mm, gotcha. You know, and it has like four mixes on oh, it. Wow. Cool. And it, it was just so. Uh, I really do like. I mean, I I love music, and yeah. so as you can see by the pictures I have in the house and. Yeah. Uh, uh, with the Beatles and with uh, you know uh, with uh, Jimi Hendrix and and uh, I love rock I love metal yeah. uh, uh, but I do listen to country I do mm -hmm. listen to uh, I love blues Eric Clapton is one of my favorite sure. artists and so uh, that's where my passions got in with the music so Don you've got the Anthem AVM seventy as your processor but one thing we didn't talk about is what are you using to power all of your equipment okay I. Um, because of my two-channel and home theater passion, mm -hmm. uh, I first bought, uh, I, I used to have what's called a Sprout 100 okay. from PS Audio, which was a little small standalone uh, amplifier, uh, had a DAC in it, gotcha. phono input, and to power the two-channel. Sure. And then I got an opportunity to um, upgrade, uh, I was going to upgrade to, to a, it's called a Parison Halo P6, yeah, familiar which is a really good, has a good DAC and has a home theater bypass and all this. Correct. So PS Audio has a deal where if you trade up, they give you full value nice. for your, for, so they gave me my 600 bucks back for my Sprout. Right. And they had uh, what they call the M700 monoblock okay. on sale. And so I wound up getting, I'll call it a youth man deal yeah. for for the, uh, the mod, so, I, so my, uh, my left and right speakers are powered by uh, PS Audio M700s. Okay. And uh, there's 700 watts into 4 ohms. Yeah, lots of power. It's a Class H amplifier, but it's got a gain cell in front of it, okay. which they voice to act somewhat like a tube. Okay, gotcha. So it's got some softness to it. Nice. So it's not harsh like the typical, okay. some of the Class D. Right. And then when I switched from the, uh, with, uh, so I was using that for the front channels, and the Marantz SR-7012 is powering everything else. Sure. So then I decided, well, maybe as I'm watching all you guys' videos and home theater stuff. <laughs> we're so a bad influence. I know yeah, I know you're a bad influence. So <laughs> we, I decided, well, maybe I should get something for the center channel. So I got a Outlaw 2200 yep. single monoblock. Sure. So that now I had those powering the, the front stage. Yeah. And the Marantz was taking care of the rest of it. Sure. But with now with the upgrade to a 15 channel, I had to do something. Need some more. Need some more. <laughs> So I, I did a lot of research, and I settled on a company called Outlaw. Yeah. And, uh, again, I got a Black Friday special. I sure. got it with free shipping and on sale. So I got yeah. uh, basically two seven-channel amplifiers, uh, under $1,000 each. Yeah. And they're Class AB. They have XLR and RCA inputs, right. and they're 130 watts per channel. Sure. So um, uh, what I did was that... I said, I cannot put those out here. Yeah. That's just too much. You know, uh, fortunately for me, my guest room is right behind. Yeah, it's like right behind this wall. So uh, I ran the, uh, so I 
made uh, cutouts in the wall, mm -hmm. framed that in, and then I ran uh, all the XLR cables through the wall back to, so the amplifiers are sitting in the room behind. Yeah. There's just a trigger cable that goes in to turn them on. Yeah. And uh, at the same time, with all this stuff I'm putting in, all these amplifiers, I knew I was going to have a power problem. Mm. And uh, having had electrical experience in the past with some industrial le electric, electrical work, yeah. I decided to run two um, dedicated circuits. Mm -hmm. So from my box to the over here is two 20-amp circuits. Okay. And then those 20-amp circuits go into a series of uh, surge suppressors yep. to protect uh, for um, uh, lightning strikes. I also have under my meter a surge protector for... Okay. So I've got two levels of, of uh, surge sure. protection. Yeah, because you've got nice equipment. You want to make sure that they last yeah. as long as possible. Right. But uh, it's so nice. And, and as you saw that the right now those amplifiers are sitting on the floor. Yeah. They eventually need to get in a rack uh, at some point. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's so nice having them out of the room here. Sure. And uh, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. And uh, everything is... Uh, said I. Uh, Basically, on, on your inspiration, I used uh, the same cables and mm -hmm. connectors that you do. Yeah. I use the uh, 14, I believe it's the 14 Yeah, 14 gauge monolith or mono price yeah. um, speaker cable, super budget and those, friendly. And those nice uh, uh, connectors. Yeah. But then I dressed them up and put cable pants and uh, yeah. nice braids on them so they look really, really nice. Yeah, because a lot of your speakers, you can kind of see, because it's in a main living room, you wanted to kind of dress that up a little bit yes. nice. So you didn't do the whole cable, right? Right, just what you see. Yeah, exactly. I mean, no use putting braid on something that's in the wall. Exactly. So uh, I spent a lot of time in my ceiling because with all these speakers and sure. everything run, and I've got three systems in my house. Right. So there's lots of cables. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I love how involved you are in your system. You know all your components. You knew the, the desire that you wanted, and I love the fact that you build it over time. I've always encouraged you guys, don't worry about trying to to build a home theater or a two channel setup or a living room setup or whatever, like all at once. Enjoy the process, man, enjoy the journey. And we've seen along our conversation of how your system has evolved over time from JBL speakers to Tecton and you went from Marantz to Anthem and, and upgraded your amplification. And, and all of these things are our process to make our system the best that we can but the great thing is you don't have, you've proven time and time again that you don't have to spend a fortune. I believe everybody can have a cool home theater, whether it's in a living room like we have here. If you've got a dedicated space, a dedicated room, like a, even a bedroom, I've got home theaters on this channel that were 12 foot by 13 foot bedroom with a 120 inch projection screen. I mean, if that doesn't show you what's possible, nothing will. But you've just done an incredible job with this space. But several of the things that we haven't talked about yet are acoustics. And one thing that with most living rooms, I know my living room, it's honestly, it's an acoustic nightmare. It's not ideal. Um, but then again, my wife won't let me put acoustic panels on the wall. And unfortunately, your wife passed away several years ago. But did you have the panels up before? No. Okay. So. Well, uh, my wife uh, had a... Um we call it hover round. Yeah. So I had to be very careful when I had an AV equipment gotcha, because it would yeah. be destroyed. Yeah. She was Mario Andretti. Oh goodness, man! She'd <laughs> knock them over. Yeah. So let's talk about the acoustic treatment in here because your room is really, really quiet. Um, because we can walk into the kitchen, and if you do the clap test, you definitely hear a huge difference. So walk us through, Don. Like, what are some things that you did that were really practical, very affordable too, on a lot of this, um, to tame those reflections in your room? Yeah, and I'll tie that too in with the TV. Yeah, okay, Because cool. that kind of affected my decision making. Yeah. I really wasn't, th this room was just not really designed for to be projector friendly. Sure. With these big tecton speakers, yeah. I'd have a limitation, and then, you know, having this over my head right mm -hmm. down here. So, because um, uh, I see in all the theater rooms, they, they want the walls dark, the ceilings dark. Correct. I'm in a room that's white. So I got to have, so I had to pick something that I could see in the daylight. Yeah. And uh, so I, I went with, uh, you know, that's why I went with the Vizio 85 inch 4K television. Yeah. 3,000 nits. Yeah. Really bright. With the light on, you can see the sure. colors perfectly. Yeah. And in the dark, it's phenomenal. But also, I didn't like the, uh, the white around, you know, around it. So when I got into the acoustics, I first um, 
I started off naively, well, you need some panels, and, and I put them more where they looked pretty as yeah. opposed to where they looked effective. Yeah, sure. Okay? Yeah. And I started with, uh, I went over your side of the of the state, mm -hmm. and a guy had made panels, these, these like, they're small panels for the, uh, like, record, like in a radio station and sure. stuff, and they're, they're, uh, they have, uh, both sides are open, okay. so you mount them off the wall and take yeah. advantage. So I got four of those. And, and I put three behind us, and I had one over the TV, thinking right. that was going to make a big difference. <laughs> right. But it really didn't. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, um, I started watching more YouTube videos and studying more. And I said, okay, now I know what I do. So I went to, I think it's called Acoustamat uh -huh. over in I Tampa. Think in Tampa, yeah. And uh, I got the two uh, blue panels that are on each side. Right. And I said, oh, those helped. I put those behind. But then I had another massive problem, mm -hmm. aside from the echo. Yeah. This patio door. Yeah. It was a. It was acting like a base radiator. The the subwoofer would hit, and you would hear it right out in the backyard. Yeah. So that's like a sliding glass door over yes. here. Yeah. And so it's vibrating as the subwoofers and all the bass and the pressure in here, and that was radiating to your neighbors, right? Right. So because the rest of the stuff, I mean, you can walk out in the street and you can't hear my system. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I went to Acoustamac and I bought the uh, insulation material mm -hmm. and the fabric that they use. Gotcha. Same color fabric. Nice. And I built a frame to go inside the, uh, that I can remove if mm -hmm. I need to, uh, a frame to go inside the patio door. And uh, that made a big difference. You know, it's got one little small opening for Benji to go sure. in and out of. Yeah. But that immediately tamed down the base on the outside. Awesome. And then uh, I added um, panels on the bottom and the top up here. Right. And... Uh, I just didn't want to spend more money on this expensive. You know, the stuff when you order the um, insulation, the shipping cost equals mm -hmm. the cost of the insulation. Yeah, true. So I saw a video on YouTube, some guys in England, yeah. and they used old folded towels yeah. for insulation. I go, that's a neat die. So I went to a Goodwill and I bought a whole bunch of bags of <laughs> towels and I built these frames and stuffed them with yeah. towels, and it did the job. And super cheap, too. Super cheap. That's awesome. Also, the curtains helped. The curtains blocked the uh, sure. seeing down the hallway, and there's a base trap behind this one on the left. Gotcha. And then the the, the curtains there just cover up. You yeah. Know. Well, that's all hard surface, so yeah. any of that would have sound reflecting back. And so just the fact that you have those curtains there, even though they're probably not super thick, they still tame some of that reflection. And then so we got the four panels in the back. We've got these here. Mm -hmm. We got this. And this, it, the sound is contained. Absolutely. And plus the um, all the albums in the on the here yeah. and the bookcases give me diffusion. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's natural. That's stuff that would normally belong in your living room. And so you were able to create kind of get creative and put your style into it and the things that interest you, but then they also serve a physical purpose and then also You've got tile on the floor, which that would be another reflective surface, and you've got a big rug, which definitely is always a good idea. Yes, and on top of that, I added uh, on the subwoofers, they have the sound path isolators, yeah. Yeah. and the speakers also have isolators underneath them gotcha. to get them off the floor. Otherwise, you'd be feeling that, that vibration to the floor. So, Don, every room needs some comfortable seating, and you've actually got theater seats in your living room, which I think is pretty cool. Tell us about these. These are made by Octane. Okay. And um, again, I, uh, when I was deciding to actually make this a theater room, yeah. uh, got a great sale. Yeah. And what's nice about these are curved. Yeah. So everybody is pointing toward the screen. Yeah. And they're, they're nothing fancy. They, they manual footrest mm -hmm. and they, they lean back. And uh, you know, they've got these trays which yeah. you can put stuff in and out. They've got a place for the iPad here, sure. you know, you know, whatever. But it made a big difference in in in, uh, in the room. Yeah. And I originally had them back further, and I realized that that was I needed to have my uh, back rear speakers a little further back. Sure. So I pushed them out a little bit more in the room. Yeah. And it, and it and it made a big difference. The other thing too, by doing that, see again in my room I don't have the depth, so my rear seats are up against the wall, and you get a lot of boundary gain back there. So it's a little bit more boomy. So by pulling those out away from the wall, you actually get better acoustics here, um, especially with that low frequency. So that's pretty awesome. And then throughout your room, actually, all right, so throughout your home, you've got a lot of decor. So kind of walk us through the, the thought behind that and just maybe some, some key pieces that you really are interested in. Yeah, you know, um, I have a lot of white walls. 
or I had a lot of white walls. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've always had a love for uh, said music, uh, anything to do with, uh, I'm into scuba diving and boating, and I had love of the ocean and water and fish and everything. So I decided just to kind of turn my man cave into an art museum. Yeah. And I got the opportunity to get all kinds of memorabilia. And this stuff is not, I call it, worth lots of money. Yeah. It's just that it's some of it's kind of unique looking. Yes. And so I was able to, uh, for example, I have uh, posters of like Jimi Hendrix. I've got John Lennon, The Beatles, uh, Jazz Fest, all these different things. Then I've got posters movie related like Wonder Woman and uh, with uh, different uh, characters from Marvel. Sure. And then I also found the characters itself. You saw up there, I've got, there's all the uh, stuff with Star Wars. You can see the Star Wars memorabilia, R2-D2 and the lightsabers and then stuff to do with Marvel movies and Batman and all the characters. And my brother found me a, an old Bell and Howe movie projector, which I thought kind that, of fit nice into that the That is decor. awesome. That is a really nice touch. And I got the popcorn maker, you know, that kind of stuff, which really works. And, uh, and then uh, so out throughout the whole house, you will find on every wall, there is artwork related to my passions and my love. I love it. And uh, uh, every room has got it. Literally every single room. But I think it's so cool, like I said, that you've tied not only what you've done in your, your living room, and we'll talk about that here as well, but you've tied that through your whole house and you just want to create that, that experience of, man, this is what I'm all about. This is what Don loves. And so tell us about, like, this is a living room. What did you, because there are definitely some things that you might not expect to be in a living room. Kind of talk about those a little bit. Yeah, I, well, you have what you call your home theater tour. Correct. This is, I call it an entertainment center. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have some goals this year, and one of them is to learn to play the drums and yeah. learn to play guitar. That's awesome. So I've got a drum kit here. I've got uh, electric guitar, acoustic guitar there. And uh, over in the other room, I've got a piano. And I said, you know, I've been around music all my life. I want to at least try learn to learn to play. That's so phenomenal. this, and and as you saw, it did not impact the sound that yeah. when we were listening. No. You would think that maybe the reflections, yeah. all this kind of stuff, but it didn't have an impact. Yeah. No, it still sounds great. So, if, you know, if I have uh, four people in the room here, I can push the drum kit out of the way and sure. everybody gets a clear view of the screen. Yeah. But... Uh, Benji's normally in that left chair. He doesn't care about the drum kit. He don't care about it. That was <laughs> awesome. So, Don, music is a huge part of what your passion is and, and what you're all about. And you've got the ability to um, stream your whole music collection. You said you've got a massive music collection to every room. And how do you do that? How do you have that set up? Okay, I, uh, I looked at a lot of different systems, and I finally settled on one called Rune. Okay. And basically what it is, it's a software that you put on a, uh, you can put it on a PC, mm -hmm. a laptop, or I actually have a dedicated unit. Right. And on that Rune server, music server, is my uh, music library. Yep. And they divide the music up. You've got your music on a hard drive, mm -hmm. but all the metadata for the music is on a solid state drive on your your C drive, if you want to call sure. it. Sure, yeah. And it allows Rune to go out and... and uh, find certain things, artists, different yeah. things quickly. And so what it does, Rune streams via Ethernet. Mm -hmm. uh, I have Ethernet connection to every system in the house. Right. And uh, there are what's called Rune endpoints. So here we have a micro Rendu on this system. Okay. I have what's called Hi-Fi Berries, which are little uh, Raspberry Pi sure. fours that are on my office system and a system in the uh, master bedroom. And even the little uh, Arelic, uh for the outdoor theater, uh, outdoor speakers. Right. That's got a, it's a rune endpoint. Gotcha. So with these, I can, and my desktops, they can all play off the of rune. Every single one can play a different playlist. Gotcha. Simultaneously. Nice. And, uh, and, and if you stop, it remembers where you were. Right. And, uh, or from, like, for example, with the, uh, the uh, iPad here's remote mm -hmm. control. Right. I can direct the rune music to any system in the house. Gotcha. So you could be in the bedroom with that and play, and play it. music nice. in there. Nice. That okay. is so cool. I like it. And then uh, what's most interesting about rune is that uh, you know, there's lots of streaming systems, yeah. but uh, rune also ties into Cobas. Yep. So I can be playing my own music collection or some from uh, 
Cobus. High resolution streaming. But yeah. let's say I got Eric Clapton on, mm -hmm. and uh, I I picked a 37 track double CD set. Yeah. Gets to the end, I didn't tell it what to do. His artificial intelligence says, okay. In the past, Don's listen. He's like he likes blues. Right. He likes rock. Yeah. So it starts randomly playing nice. tracks that uh, it thinks I would like. Not only that, is it pretty good at it, but I get to discover new music sure. that I never. Yeah. So I've got a hundred and ten thousand <laughs> tracks on my server. <laughs> I would never listen to all those. So it's doing AI not on somebody else's server, but it's doing AI on your own. Server on your own in server. Your own collection. That yeah. is pretty cool. So it's a very Good system for managing music. Nice. Now, you mentioned a couple other systems in your home. You've got a bedroom sit system in there, a little bit smaller than this one, but what do you have in there? Well, it was like this before. Before, I had uh, two big uh, the Sony subwoofers and gotcha. JBL speakers yep. on it, yep. and a Marantz uh, SR6008, which I picked up on a Youth Man deal. Okay. And uh, I had uh, you know infin uh, speakers behind, lots of cables and everything. Yeah. And then guess what? I attended last year called the AV Summit. You know yeah. that thing, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And I won one of the grand prizes, yeah. which was the Clip Cinema 1200 soundbar system. Super cool. And it's got uh, the soundbar is 1200 total watts. Sure. Yeah. It's got the um, left, right, center, two up firing at most, mm -hmm. wireless subwoofer. Then the rear is also uh, front firing and up firing speakers. Right. And it just totally changed the. Um, the nature of the room. Mm. I mean, it went from having all these cables and yeah. and uh, all this equipment sitting around to something that's very clean. Yeah. And as you heard, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not, not like this. Yeah, it's definitely not this. But for a bedroom setup, you're just chilling. You're getting ready to go to bed, or maybe you want to watch a, a movie without cranking up everything. Definitely yeah. a pretty sweet setup. So I can from there. I, I mean, I have another 4K player in there, yeah. so I can watch if I want to watch a DVD. I can watch it. Yeah. I can also stream because it's got. Fire stick there, mm -hmm. and uh, I also uh, have the rune coming in so I can listen to music. Sure. And then I also have it uh, a turntable in there that I can, if I want to play some music, yeah. I can play with the turn. So I have all that capability. Yeah. Plus, it's also feeding out to my garage if I'm out working in the garage. I got music out there. Yeah, music everywhere. And then of course you spend a lot of time in your office, and you've got some a system in there too. <laughs> Tell us that one. Well, uh, because of my love for JBL speakers. Uh, I was over again shopping in your neighborhood, yeah. and uh, I found sitting in a thrift store uh, two white JBL speakers. I mm -hmm. said, I've never seen white JBLs. Where are these? They came from a church. They mm -hmm. had bought JBL L80Ts, had somebody professionally paint them white to go in their auditorium. Nice. Yeah. And so I picked those up for incredibly low price. Sure. I upgraded them from a L80T to a T3, which is a much better crossover. Okay. And then I... Uh, I took the subwoofers that were in there and put underneath there. So everything has dual subwoofers. Every, yeah. you know, except for that room only has one. <laughs> but I've got dual subwoofers in the office. And uh, and then I've got a JBL Center. And I've got that Marantz SR6008 in there. Yeah. And then the Infinity speakers everywhere else. As you know, I love Infinity. Sure. And all of us. And it's got a Hi-Fi Berry endpoint. Mm -hmm. And it's got a uh, just a Blu-ray player in there. Yeah. So I can literally, no matter where I am, and I've got a 40-inch Vizio. The, uh, the the theater in the bedroom that's a se that's the seventy inch that used to be in here Vizio okay. right and uh, then there's a Vizio forty inch four uh, K and unlike other people I've just had fantastic luck with Vizio yeah every one I bought has been perfect panel yeah so I, I guess people do have some bad luck sure but uh, sure. these have been good so I can sit here no matter where I'm at I can watch my movies yeah. wherever I'm going then I also you know have desktop systems on top of the right. uh, Home theater Some system. little near field setups. And yeah, I have a Definitive Pro with its sure. own sub. Yeah. Set up as near field with a LoxJ um, amplifier connected with, uh, it's got its own deck and uh, I can plug a headphone into it if I want to. Sure. So, and all those can play the Rune endpoint so mm -hmm. I can play music on them. Right. Or I can be playing music on that and watching a movie on the other at the same time. So, you know, we've got music and we've got video everywhere. All right, Don. I think you might be addicted. Yeah. <laughs> to this hobby. Why do I do it? Because I can. I love it. I really do. Don, <laughs> this has been such a fun day just hanging out with you, checking out all of your, I mean, we've heard all of your systems in your home. This absolutely rocks. I was super impressed with this. Really, really great sound from the Tectons. I'm really impressed that you've got 25-year-old speakers 
that are matched up with that. And they still sound great. They still sound clear. And that's one thing I've always tried to share with you guys. If you're going to invest money, put some in what the sound that you're wanting to achieve with your speakers. Because I used to have La Scala's. They were, uh, golly, I think they were 40 years old. You've got 25-year-old speakers, and they still sound great. If you take care of your speakers, feed them clean power, which you're doing, um, they're going to last you guys as long as you don't abuse them. Um, but but you don't have to worry about cranking them up and, and them distorting. Not once did we ever hear any kind of distortion in this. And we were listening to pretty significant volume. And Dom was like, I can turn it up some more if you want, you know. And <laughs> so we did for a little bit. But but they, I think this is another example of a system that your ears are going to give out long before the speakers do. I think also uh, you talk about uh, when you're budgeting. Yeah. These infinity old infinity speakers mm -hmm. they do a good job for surrounds yeah you know i mean I, what i use them up front no yeah sure but uh for surrounds you know yeah. they, they let me put my money in that anthem receiver yeah. you know or better subs yeah 100 percent, man so guys i hope you've enjoyed this tour don's got an incredible setup and hopefully you've just got some inspiration for maybe your setup maybe you don't have a dedicated theater room but you've got a living room and maybe you looked around and went man I didn't realize I could get away with a, is that an 85 inch TV? 85. You know, so he's got an 85 inch TV. He's got six Atmos speakers. We got a 9.2.6 total or 9.1.6, depending on which way you view that. But that's absolutely incredible. He's used some practical application of putting physical things in the room, such as acoustic treatment, diffusers as for, in the form of like records, and media, and then even the um, the different um, what do you call those? Like uh, not figures. What do you call? Oh those? Uh, yeah, just they're, uh, they're decor. Decor, yeah. Yeah, all the different decor and the the statues is what I was trying to say. Those kind of in a way act like little diffusers as well. So Don, thanks so much, man. I have a question for you. Yeah. How old are you, Michael? I am forty six years old. Do you know? that I started messing with home theater six years before you were born. Oh my goodness, man. That's awesome. So you've been at this a long time. Well, I, it's more music. I mean, yeah. my dad ran an appliance store. Gotcha. Uh, sold Admiral and Philco. So we had a console TV with a record player and yeah. all that stuff in there. And then uh, went off to college and I, my dad says, well, you got to have some music for college. So mm. he gave me an old Philco stereo turntable, that turntable yeah comes down right and then as time went on and then i uh, i wanted to get more and more and more and i wound up at circuit city and bought yeah. a bunch of stuff so i've always just slowly upgraded over the years sure. what i could afford yeah and then um but uh i think things really exploded when i started watching all these youtube channels and i saw all the things you could do yeah and having uh, a home theater is a game changer for me yeah i rarely go to the theaters anymore yeah. i will go see top gun yes absolutely that's worth it to go yeah but uh yeah i like being here absolutely and that's really the whole purpose of home theater tours is i want to give you guys some inspiration give you some some ideas that maybe you can implement into your own setup and really just kind of show you different size styles different configurations different speakers like these are really unique speakers um just to kind of open up and expand your idea of what is possible for a home theater. Well, if you enjoyed this video series, I've got more home theaters right here in this playlist. Be sure to check that out because we've got some other incredible home theaters coming from the home theater tour in Florida. And as always, you guys be blessed and we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you, Mike.